Hello, hello. Welcome to Think, Feel, Eat broadcast number 10. Tonight is a special um, edition because it isn't so much talking about food and eating and weight management and all of the things surrounding emotional eating and all of that stuff that I usually talk about on Thursday nights, Thoughts Thursday, but instead it is about our thoughts, about our thoughts during this pandemic. So for that reason, I'm actually recording this on my personal Facebook page. So some of you who might be watching on my personal Facebook page, this is gonna be a, like an almost hour long webinar. And um, so then it'll go into my Think, Feel, Eat broadcast on, on, in podcasts and YouTube and my blog and so forth. Um, but some of you uh, may not be familiar with the life coaching concept of uh, thoughts, feelings, and actions. So I'm gonna be teaching this tonight um, and I'm super, super excited to be bringing this information to you. So to begin with, um, I, uh, my tech girl made this graphic and I've been sharing it uh, today, different places. And this is where I really wanna start with this webinar. I wanna start with the thoughts that we have around something like these two memes. The thoughts that we have surrounding these memes and um, examining those thoughts, seeing if they are helpful or not, and then also just seeing that neither one is really right or wrong. All right, so the, the graphic looks like this. They may have seen me sharing it earlier in the day, and it says, which one is right? And then it has a meme on the left that's floating around, and it has a meme on the right that is also floating around. And underneath which one is right, blank or blank, it says answer either one. Both of these are thoughts. That's what we're gonna learn about tonight. What really matters is your thoughts about your thoughts. So meta, right? Okay, so I'm going to help you figure this out. All right, I'm excited um, to be teaching this. So before I go into the memes, I guess I'll just give a little bit of background in my um, weight loss and life coaching uh, interest over the last year. So um, many of you know that Ray Baby and I have lost 220 pounds together. And um, we have, I've lost like 50 pounds over like a dozen years or 10 years. And then I lost 50 more in the last few years. And he has lost um, 120 over uh, like a really a two year period, a year and a half. So um, together we are the minus 220 pound pair. And so uh, a year ago, so a couple of years ago, I, we got into intermittent fasting and that's how he took off, you know, a lot of his weight, healthy supplements, uh, started us both on our weight loss journeys and then adding uh, intermittent fasting helped us a lot. And then a year ago, um, I was stalled um, as I have been a lot on this journey and, and just really trying to take off the last 20 pounds, having a certain size goal, um, he wanted to take off another 20 pounds. And so I started, um, let me make sure I'm, okay. So I started, um, I went through a program called Self-Coaching Scholars. And I'm still in that program. It's been a year. And through that, I learned all about weight loss coaching and life coaching and so forth. They have a, a certification program that I'm not in, but I'm in the Self-Coaching Scholars part. So through that, then I started to learn about how our thoughts and feelings affect our actions. Specifically, how our thoughts and feelings affect our eating, our emotions, our emotional eating, our binging, our overeating, um, our cravings and desires for unhealthy foods, and so forth. So not that I eat perfect, because that isn't part of my protocol, but um, I started learning all about that. And then in the course of that, I started learning what is called the think, feel, act cycle, which is very um, popular. You can check the Googles. It's very popular among uh, life coaches. It is also uh, used by psychologists and therapists and things like that. And basically, in a nutshell, because I teach about this every week, so I don't want to repeat everything I said for the last three months, but in a nutshell, we have a thought, okay? We have a thought about something. And whatever that thought is, it makes us have a feeling. And then that feeling generates actions. So in 
um, practical terms, all right, we have a tendency to think that our thought is true. So for instance, if we say something like, um, you know, the pandemic is horrible, everything's so awful, that would be a thought. But we think that that is tr a true thing. We think everybody thinks that, right? It's, it's, it's a universal concept. And then of course, once we think that, the pandemic is awful, everything's horrible, and I'm not going to try to get you to think that everything's perfect, okay? Don't worry, that's not, that's not where we're heading with this at all. Okay, but with our thought, everything's horrible, the pandemic's horrible, then we have a feeling of hopelessness, perhaps despair, you know, a feeling is a sensation in our body, it's a vibration in our body, so we might like get a stomach ache, or we might have like a heaviness in our chest, um, that's not the virus. We might have, you know, a lump in our throats. We might feel butterflies in our stomach. Those are all sensations that are caused by a feeling. So hopeless dis despair, whatever. And then once we have that feeling, guess what? We take actions. Now, the beauty of the think, feel, act cycle is that we can come in here and we can come up here and work on our thought, whatever that thought might be, or our thoughts. I work on my thoughts every day. We can come in and work on our thoughts and then that will help us with our feelings, that will help us with our actions. And that's kind of the basis of Think, Feel, Eat, which is what I teach on Thursday nights, the basis of um, actions that have to do with weight management. So the thing about the thought, the very first part of the Think, Feel, Act cycle is that we have a tendency to think that a thought is like what everybody thinks. So in the case of the pandemic so horrible, you know, everything's horrible, this is, a pan this is a horrible pandemic, we think, well, that's true. This is a ter terrible, terrible pandemic. So, but the real circumstance is that there is a pandemic. And then we can think this is so horrible, we may as well just give up. Or somebody who's out on a ship, a cruise ship someplace, they're out somewhere in a sunny area, they don't even know that a pandemic is going on. They don't think that. So that shows us that this is really our thought, right? So while we're never going to go during a pandemic from the, this is a horrible pandemic, everything's so bad to everything's so wonderful, this is just perfect. We're not going to go there. But what if we did some things to help our thoughts? Not Pollyanna, everything's perfect and wonderful, but rather just maybe a little bit of help that would change a feeling and then would dictate our actions. So I wanna to start today with these memes and which one is right? Because one of the things that we have the capability as human beings to do is to think about our thoughts. So when we see memes or, or graphics or anything on social media, we think something, right? We, we laugh, we think it's funny, we um, share with our friends. I'm, I, I love to share funny things, you guys know that already. I love to share funny things. We um, maybe makes us, maybe we think, oh, that's not true. And then it gives us a feeling of anger or a feeling of um, you know, resentment towards a person who's sharing it or something like that, all right? But when we read meanings like this, we have a thought. So, the question is these two popular memes that are floating around right now. And when we think about which one of these two is right, there really isn't a right meme and a wrong meme in these cases. It's what we think about them. And that's what we're gonna work on tonight. So in the first box, it says, the first meme says, if you don't come out of this quarantine with a new skill, a new side hustle started, more knowledge, your house in order, you never lack time, you just lacked discipline, okay? So maybe you read that meme going on Facebook, and you're like, yeah, you know, and so you're one of those people who are painting the entire house during your quarantine. And this has just spurred you on to, to prove to yourself or others or whatever, to prove that you don't lack self-discipline, okay? This one, however, says, it's okay to not make grandiose plans or hit extraordinary goals during this time. Do what works for you, your family, or situation, and breathe. So maybe you read this one and your thought was, oh my word, that's so judgmental. And your feeling was like, 
animosity towards the author of it or resentment towards the person who shared it or maybe even anger you know maybe it was a feeling of inferiority so it was like it was humbling or you really felt humiliated within yourself from this maybe you saw this one and you thought oh good somebody finally sees it the way i do right and you don't have to do grandiose things so the point of which one is right is that neither one is right. Either one could be right. Both of these are thoughts. This is a thought and this is a thought. And when you see this thought on Facebook or in the socials, you have a thought, okay? Thus, thoughts about our thoughts. All right, so what really matters is your thoughts about them. So when we look over here at the think, feel, act cycle, we can see that whatever we thought about one of those graphics, whenever they went, and the funny thing about it is if you go through the comments underneath those two memes, it's very interesting, right? Because you have people who are commenting underneath this one. If you don't come out of this quarantine with these things, you're just plain lazy kind of thing, okay? And you have people commenting, this is so judgmental. I can't believe you shared this. Or way to heap more guilt on moms who are trying to, um, you know, homeschool three kids, quarantine school three kids, and uh, work from home. All right. Maybe there is a comment underneath there that says, um, you know, I agree with this so much. I don't know why everybody's complaining. You have all this time. You always wanted time, and now you have all the time in the world. So just use it wisely. Whoa, babies, judge much, right? Okay, so there are thoughts underneath that one. And then underneath this one, in the comments, lots of thoughts under that one as well. It's okay to not make grandiose plans or have ex hit extraordinary goals during this time. Then you see people underneath this meme commenting, oh man, finally, this is what I have been thinking. I just don't understand how those people are building coffee tables and painting their entire house or becoming a chef. I can't even get my grocery order delivered. All right. Or somebody's under this saying, um, you know, you might not have to make grandiose plans, but it would be wise to use it this time in a, in a productive way. All kinds of comments underneath it, right? And then, of course, we get some of the social fighting, right? <laughs> the fighting on the socials, right? So um, with these two, we have thoughts. All right. And so think feel, act. Now I want to talk about the think, feel, act cycle um, from like a spiritual standpoint as well. The, the really interesting thing about think, feel, act is that um, it's been around, you know, forever and ever and ever. Now my coach specifically has a, a five element self-coaching model that I also use, but it's, but in the middle, it has think, feel, act. All right, so the thing about Think, Feel, Act is that it's been around, you know, forever. I don't even know when it first came out, but it's not like it's something brand new, hot off the press, you know. And people want to argue with it because they want to say, no, it's not my thought that's causing me to feel this way. It's the pandemic. No, it's not my thought that's causing me to feel this way. It is, you know, that I have to homeschool three kids and I might lose my job. It's that that's causing me. It's not, it's not what I think about it. This is a fact. I have to quarantine school three kids and now, I'm, and now I've just lost my job. It's not, it's not my thought. It's really that that happened and it caused me you know, to feel terrible and then to just like buffer with food and gain the cor uh, Corona 15 or whatever it might be. But we know that that isn't true that is really what she thinks because we could put it up here just like as a circumstance, just something that happened. Quarantine school, three kids, lost my job. So then she's, her thought is, this is terrible that this is happening. But somebody else could be homeschooling three kids, lost her job, and her thought can be, I hated that job and I always wanted to homeschool. Same circumstance in both situations, but a different thought. 
So we know that it's not what is happening externally. We know it's what we think about it. Now, a lot of people try to change their lives, right? All of us try to change their lives, right? I've been a self changer ever since I can remember. I mean, I can remember in junior high making improvement lists. I mean, you know, I was just like into self-development ever since I can remember. Right underneath uh, Donna loves right and Ray loves Donna all over the edges of my paper, of course. But I, we have wanted to change all the time. We always want to change. We, we are programmed, we are created to want good things, right? We're created to want improvement, so to speak. All right, so we come along in a normal, typical situation, not necessarily right now, but we come along in a normal, typical situation like we're in now, and we start a new action list. What I'm talking about, right? A new action list where we are going to change all of our eating, We'll just take eating as an example. On Monday, on the first of the month, as soon as vacation is over, as soon as the ding-dongs are gone, <laughs> okay? And we make this new list of actions. And it looks so good on paper. And we're on Pinterest and everywhere. And it all, you know, people are doing this. They're eating more healthfully. I can do this. I have my plan all written down. These are my actions. And then we don't understand why we can't carry it out. Right? We don't understand. We have our action list. We know it's what's best for us. You know, we're thinking with our prefrontal cortex, planning ahead, that kind of thing, deciding ahead of time. Or we're coming up in here with a feeling and we're like, I just don't want to feel sad anymore. Or I just don't want to feel angry anymore. Or this feeling of resentment towards this person is causing pain in my chest. I just don't want to feel that resentment feeling. And then we decide we're gonna change our feeling. Okay, so the actions, maybe we couldn't change our actions. So instead we're gonna change our feeling in another scenario. And we still just can't click our heels together, close our eyes, clench our fists, repeat you know, 10 times, I feel love for them, 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 right? We're not able to do that and we don't understand why we're not. And it is because these things are dependent on what we're thinking. So when it comes to a thought, we can tweak our thought. I'm gonna teach you how to do that tonight. We can tweak our thought. We don't have to come all the way over to some amazing, grandiose, perfect thought because there is no perfect thought right now. I mean, right? in most situations. But when we change our thought even just a little bit, we can get a little bit better feeling and a little bit better actions. So the think, feel, act cycle, as I mentioned, is not anything new, right? It's just that most of us have a tendency, it runs in the background, but most of us have a tendency to think that's not it. You don't understand. It's my circumstances. It's what's going on right now. It's this bad stuff. You don't know what, what's going on in my life, right? But as I said, two people can have the exact same bad things going on and one can say, this is horrible, I've lost my job and I have to quarantine school three, three kids. And another one can say, hallelujah, I lost my job and I get to homeschool. Same situation. So it is truly our thought that is driving our feeling and our actions. Now, that doesn't mean we have to change our thoughts. We don't have to change. The people who think this can keep right on thinking it. Although I probably wouldn't share this, right? Because I know that everybody has their own thought. And I just want to let people have their own thought, okay? So we can believe this, we can think this, we can act on this if it has a net positive consequence or outcome, or we can think this. And both people will be perfectly fine right? It's not like one is right and the other is wrong. So when sometimes people of certain religions think about life coaching or think, feel, act or something like that, they sometimes think it's like the power of positive thinking or something. And they're like, no, you know, we can't just, like I said, click our heels together and, you know, make a new job appear or whatever. And that's true. And think, feel, act, thought work, 
self-coaching in this way is not the same as the power of positive thinking because you are not relying on a thought to get you something. You are relying on a thought to help your feelings and then to get some better actions, better for you, right? And nobody is saying these actions are good and these actions are bad. Nobody is saying that painting the entire house or becoming a chef is good and reading out loud and watching movies with the kids all day is bad. That's not true. There is no bad, there is no good when it comes to how we handle something like a pandemic, right? All right, so most, I won't say most, many major religions and religions that I know of have uh, this kind of embedded into them. And I think that one of the reasons why I love the think, feel, act cycle for Christians specifically, but for anybody who believes that their thoughts can, can dictate how they behave and things is because um, when I have, I've always wanted to think better thoughts. I have always wanted, you know, because like I said, many major religions have as like just kind of going through their teaching that um, we should think on these things. We should think on good things, right? I know that's in uh, the Bible. Think on these things, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's good, whatever's virtuous, think on these things. So Christians then and people of other faiths are trying to follow their faith's, you know, commands or uh, teachings to think on better things. I think about the verse that says, as a man thinketh, so he is, right? And I know that that's kind of a universal um, religion, religious theme in, in, other pla in other places. And so it is, the thing that I love about Think, Feel, Act is that all the times that I, you know, try to repeat good thoughts over and over and over to myself, or maybe I got a little into the power of positive thinking, I don't really, I, I think I did before, not greatly, but you know, that, that I could think these things and things would change or that, um, that, you know, if we just write all our feelings out, you know, that will help us think better thoughts or we say certain mantras and that will help us think better thoughts and so forth that I felt like my attempts at changing my thoughts before the think, feel, act cycle were haphazard. They weren't, um, they, they didn't have a framework to them. And so now I have a framework for a thought and I, and I do some form of this every day uh, along with Bible reading and devotionals and things like this and prayer. But we also have, I can put my a thought in here about anything. I can put a feeling right here that that thought makes me have and then I can see what actions come up. And then like I'm gonna teach you in the last part of this webinar, we can come up here and let's say, okay, this thought is getting me, it's giving me this terrible feeling and I'm not having actions that help me. So I wanna come back up here and I wanna get a new thought. And like I said, it might not be going from horrible, terrible, awful to, oh, this is so great, but maybe we can go somewhere in between. So the thing about these graphics, these memes right here with, um, you know, painting the entire house and becoming a gourmet chef versus um, lying on the sofa watching Netflix, one is not bad, one is not good. The thing about those is that they go back to what we think about Psych 101, okay? So those of you who were in Psych 101, I. I had a love-hate relationship with my psych classes until I got further into my education degree and my master's, and then I loved educational psychology. Love, love, loved it. But Psych 101, if we go back to Psych 101, we remember that there was such a thing as Maslow's hierarchy, right? And I'm no psych person. I do not have a degree in psychology. Um, but we know that there is an element of truth to that. In Maslow's hierarchy, you have these um, like low level survival type of things on the bottom of the hierarchy. Yeah, I think it's the bottom, on the bottom of the hierarchy. So we need food, we need shelter, we need warmth, you know, we need companionship. And then you keep moving up. And when people, you know, feel a sense of security in the bottom ones, then what happens? Then they go on to like self-actualization.
according to psychology. But the premise is true that when we feel or we think that we're not getting our basic needs met, then we cannot move on to painting the entire house and becoming a gourmet chef. So Maslow's hierarchy is, can, be, can be really spurred on by our thoughts, right? Like somebody right now can think, my groceries are delivered, my heat is on, I'm in place in shelter, everything is, is comfortable here, I have warmth, I have heat, I have food, um, I have companionship, on you know digitally online and so um i feel like i can move on and paint the whole house another person might think my groceries never come on time i have so many kids to feed and they're tired of what we have here i have to home quarantine school them right now while i'm trying to work from home so in that case that person thinks and there's nothing wrong with these thoughts. That person thinks, I don't have the, basis, the basics covered. So there's no way I'm moving on to painting the whole house and becoming a gourmet chef. So there, that is why there's nothing wrong with either one because it is our thoughts. There's nothing wrong with thoughts of survival. Nothing wrong with that. And there's also nothing wrong with thoughts of grandiose accomplishments, right? And it's not like the person who is so overwhelmed that she isn't getting much done and she's just trying to breathe. It's not like this person is less than this person. We are all driven by our thoughts. And one thought is not, your thought is not higher than my thought, my thought is not higher than your thoughts because we all come at our thoughts with our own experience. Right? It is easy for me to think right now, I'm inside, I'm safe, I never leave the house. <laughs> I am teaching my students online. I have my groceries delivered. My kids are all in their home. Some of them are working, so that is a concern. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, four in a medical out of the 13. So that is a bit of a concern. Um, but I also think, well, they're young and they're, you know, they're doing well and, you know, they're taking pre precautions and things. So I can think to myself, my basic needs are met. So I think I will write a new writing book. Yes, I think I will. I think I'll write a new writing book. But somebody else who has other thoughts, like I'm older, I might get sick. I have to quarantine school all these kids, I'm gonna lose my job, all of those things, then that gives a different feeling and a different set of actions. And they're all perfectly fine. So there is nothing wrong with being in survival mode and there's nothing wrong with grandiose quarantine accomplishments. And it is of course the comments that are the problem, right? Because those are people thinking thoughts about somebody else when we have no business thinking thoughts of somebody else because we have no idea what, where they are, where their thoughts are, where their feelings are, what their fears are, right? So we can, if we want, we don't have to, okay, it's important to note that you don't have to change anything, right? But if you want to, we can change our thoughts to get a different feeling. Okay, not to everything's perfect and wonderful. Oh, I just feel like I can, you know, I feel um, so motivated and then all these grandiose actions, we don't have to go there. But if you want to change your thoughts a little bit surrounding this, especially if you are in fear a lot, if you're in fear a lot, it would be very good for you to get some coaching or talk to people about getting better thoughts that will help your feelings and your actions because it can only help you, right, to feel better. Even if you just feel a little bit better, right? We don't have to go to everything's perfect. So I'm going to give you some like, kind of um, broad generalities and then I'm going to leave you with some um, practical things 
that we can do to change some of our thoughts. If you want to change some of your thoughts, if you think that would be helpful to you. Again, we're not changing our thoughts so that we can move over here or over here. We're changing our thoughts because we see how a certain thought brings fear and is not helpful for us. Everybody has to decide for themselves where they are with their thoughts. All right, so the first thing, generally speaking, that we can do more like, you know, in a, in a generalized kind of a broad sense is accepting that life is 50-50. We have a tendency, and I'm the queen of this, we have a tendency to think that um, life should be easier than it is, right? Sometimes I'm in a thread with some friends and sometimes we'll just write to each other. We all have grown kids and we have grandbabies and, and things are hard sometimes. And sometimes we'll just write to each other. We have this, this line that is in our thread that's really funny. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie um, uh, While You Were Sleeping. Yeah, While You Were Sleeping, Sandra Bullock. Okay, well, when his son wants to tell him that he's not going to continue on with the estate furniture, buying, whatever, whatever, whatever thing, he comes and he brings him donuts in and he's sitting there talking to his dad. His, his dad is really funny. He's the dad from Everybody Loves Raymond and he's funny anyway. And um, the dad says, you know, life is just whatever, whatever, you know, you're so Sometimes, you know, everybody's doing well, everybody's healthy, everybody's happy. And, you know, you just live for those times. And the son says, Pop, this isn't one of those. <laughs> and kind of at our ages in my friendship thread, my, eat, my text thread, you kind of just have to laugh at times, not about this situation, but about other things, right? So every once in a while, you know, we'll be just talking in our thread, you know, that we're worried about this, we're concerned about that, or, you know, so-and-so, you know, is two weeks late with her birth or whatever. I mean, you know, you know how moms are and grandmas are. And then I'll just type in the thread, you know, you know, when everybody's happy, everybody's healthy, everything's going well, dot, 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 this isn't one of those times. All right. So we want everyone to be happy, everyone to be healthy, everything to be going well, right? That's what we want. We want for life to be just like great, right? And I have a big long story about my 50-50 that I will not give in this, in this broadcast, but I will say this, that I never wanted anything bad to happen. Not that I want anything bad to happen now, but I mean like I was fearful of the feelings that I would get from something bad happening when I, you know, thought about how, how bad it is. So I would like measure the badness. It's really weird, but so I would think to myself, you know, well, this happened to me in elementary school. This happened to me in junior high. This happened to me in high school at, you know, at 19, my brother died at, you know, this age, our eighth baby was, uh, uh, died in utero during an injury and blood transfusion. And I would like keep track of the bad things and I would like tally them up because in my way of thinking, once you get to a certain number of bad things in life, then you didn't have more bad things. Go figure. I do not know why. I mean, I knew the Bible and I know the Bible says that the rain falls on the just and unjust and the sun shines on the just and unjust, right? And that, you know, Paul was content in this situation and he was content in that situation. So it's not like I didn't understand, you know, that suffering is a part of life, but we always think that life should be better or easier than it is. And so one of the first things that helped me with controlling my thoughts and feelings in the think, feel, act cycle was coming to grips with the fact that life is 50-50. And, you know, it could be 60-40 for you. It could be, you know, 40-60. It could be 70-30. But the point is that there are going to be bad times and there are going to be good times. There are going to be easy times and there are going to be hard times, right? And when we are afraid of the bad times, like I was, 
I mean, I would, I was afraid all the time. I was so fearful. Um, I was so afraid, like if my kids were driving back to where they lived, like if, you know, they were leaving us and they were going back to Texas or back to uh, South Carolina or back to Chicago or whatever. And I was, I was just scared all the time. I was just always very, very fearful, fearful because I didn't want any bad. I just didn't want any bad. So, but through this process of applying, think, feel, act, I've come to realize and come to accept that life is 50-50. Now, it doesn't mean I want the bad things to happen by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm not so afraid of them. I don't tally the bad and hope that they outweigh that, that my, my list of bads are done, right? And a lot of that 50-50, when we are able to accept that life is 50-50, then we stop trying to control so many things. And that is the next thing that we can do. We need to stop thinking, I have no control over this. You don't understand. This pandemic is just so bad. It's just, it, I wouldn't mind, I don't mind hard times, but I don't like this because this is different than everything else because I don't have any control. When the fact of the matter is, we never have any control. I mean, what makes us feel like now we have so little control over what happens, but a month ago we had all of this control. We didn't have control a month ago. We don't have control now. And when you start realizing that you don't have control, that you can't change other people, you can't change circumstances, you can't make somebody do something, you can't will them to, you can't shame them to, you can't talk them into it, you can't beg them, you can't cajole them. They are their own person and you are your own person, right? And so when we start to say that, we start to realize that we never did have any control. And that is a good place to be when we're trying to change our thoughts because then all those controlling thoughts, we will start to lose and we'll start using thoughts that really do have some bearing on us and on our situations. In the Christian world, I believe this is a Corey Ten Boom quote, it is to trust an unknown future to a known God, right? It's that life is what it is. And we know that it rains on the just and the unjust and it sh shines on the just and the unjust. And we don't know who's just and unjust. And it's not for us to say just bad things happen and good things happen. And we have no control over them. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't do anything in our power, right? But we have to realize the limits to our power. We can stay quarantined, we can wash our hands, we can not squeeze grandkids for two weeks or a month or whatever, and try to, you know, stop the spread. And we should do whatever we feel led to do, but in the big picture, that is not in our control, right? So we do what we can do out of love, and then we just know that we can't control it. All right, so when we want to grab a thought, so let's suppose that up here we were, you know, pandemic is horrible, everything's terrible. And then that gives us a feeling of hopelessness, a feeling of despair even. I mean, you know, on the, on the feeling spectrum, you know, not that your feelings are less than mine or whatever, but we all know that despair is like really, really far in. And even if we had, you know, just an openness or a feeling of um, curiosity, or something like that, it would be better than despair, right? So we can come over here and work on that. All right, so we can grab a new thought if we want. Unlike the power of positive thinking, we don't grab just any outlandish thought and, and hope that and click our heels together and think that something is going to change. We purposely take control of our thoughts because that is what an adult does, because that is emotional adulthood is to say, I'm going to, I'm going to take control of my thoughts. If you are able to, if you are not able to, that's fine too. But if you are able to, I want to help you. So let's talk about some practical things. In my teaching, um, Thoughts Thursday and DonnaReach.com, I teach this idea of um, ladder thoughts. Well, all life coaches teach it. But because of my great love for every small person in the world, I don't call them ladder thoughts because ladder thoughts 
you know, end up that look that you're, you're down here on the bottom rung and you want to be thinking something up here, but you can't quite make it. So you ladder your way up a little bit and take a thought on the way up. That's fine. Kind of boring. I like monkey bar thoughts. Get it? Monkey bar thoughts. Children, wonderful children, all children are wonderful. All right, so monkey bar thoughts mean that we can't go all the way across. I can't go all the way across the monkey bars. So we cannot go all the way across the monkey bar, the thought monkey bars to everything is perfect, everything's wonderful, it's all just going to be so splendid. Okay, we can't get over all the way to there. So instead, we just go a couple of bars over. We monkey bar our way over to a better thought that helps us more. Now, when I say a better thought, I don't mean a better thought than somebody else's. And I don't mean a better in that you used to have bad thoughts. I mean a more helpful thought, okay? Because the one thing about think, feel, act is that it shouldn't shame anybody for wherever they are in their thought processes. So it's going to be a better thought for you in terms of your final outcome, in terms of your feeling, maybe in terms of better actions, right? So more helpful to you. All right, so with our monkey bar thoughts in mind, we want to come back here and we wanna get rid of the pandemic is horrible and terrible and awful and um, I'm in despair, okay? We'll just start there, all right? We'll just start there. So one way that we can do this is to really set some time limits and boundaries on our thoughts. Our thoughts are just sentences in our mind that we say over and over again, right? A thought is a sentence in your mind that you think, okay? Or true to language arts lady, it could be a fragment. <laughs> it could be a clause. It could be a phrase. It could be a prepositional phrase. Okay, it can be anything you think. All right, so one of the ways that we can do that is to watch our imagination because your imagination is layered thoughts. Whoa, layer, 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 layer upon layer. When our imagination goes to one extreme, you know, like the world is going to end kind of extreme or the other extreme where everything's really just perfect. I don't know what you're talking about. To, to be in either of those extremes and to imagine that our thoughts, our imagination are going to, that's going to be layering thought after thought after thought after thought that will not help us. All right, so they, they'll be so deep that we can't get through those thoughts. So we don't want to let our imagination go overboard either way. So one of the ways that we can do this practically is to reduce our input. Now, I don't mean bury your head in the sand and don't find out what's going on. But many people who are in this despair feeling and this, this thought cycle here of uh, the pandemic is so horrible, the life is so horrible now, they are bombarding themselves all the time with information, right? They are listening all the time, reading all the time, on the social scrolling, you know, uh, listening to every press briefing and everything that's going on. All right, so in a practical sense, one of the ways that we can change our thoughts is to reduce the things coming into our brain, right? The negative things, the things that cause us to have those um, thoughts that lead to despair. So we can reduce the input that causes you to run wild. So one of the ways to do this is to set up like a, um, a, uh, like a pandemic protocol, we'll call it a pandemic protocol or pandemic information protocol. And that is where you just like go on an information diet, <laughs> right? And so I said before that it's really hard to start with changing actions, but when an action affects your thoughts so much, any kind of control you can gain over that is good. So maybe you put something in place where you listen, watch, scroll 30 minutes in the morning, listen, watch, scroll 30 minutes in the evening. And that is your pandemic information protocol. Information, pandemic protocol, pandemic protocol information. I don't know. I was trying to make an alliteration. Okay, so 
so you are just bringing in the boundaries of your input, right? And it's better always to have something measurable, right? You all know about smart goals, you know, they're measurable, they're, uh, what are they? They, um, I can't even remember what all the SMARTs stand for, but we know that if something isn't measurable, then we have no way of knowing if we succeeded. Okay, I teach that big time in my um, overeating material, because if we don't know what our protocol is, how will we know if we broke it, right? Yeah, so we will not know if we gave into cravings, we will not know if we overate, we will not know if we ate emotionally, unless we know what, our, what we want a protocol to be. So you reduce your input, okay? That will help the thoughts, right? For one thing, if you reduce it to two or three times a day for a period of time, you have all that time in between there that you're not seeing everything and hearing everything and reading everything. So that will be super, super helpful in that way. And then also just the sheer amount. Like if now you do it two, if in the protocol you do it two 30 minute time periods, that's way better. That's only one hour, as opposed to maybe you were doing it three, four, five, or six hours a day, all right? Okay, next is to come back to the present and to what absolutely is with gratitude. This is a lot like what um, we hear about people with anxiety, how they are grounding themselves. So if you look this up on the Googles, you know, grounding yourself in, in, during anxiety or, you know, anxiety exercises and things like that, you will find something like this. And um, I have added on to this to... Um, Ground yourself to come back to the present, to what is absolutely true and real and you know for sure, and then do it with gratitude um, because gratitude changes your life, right? So you can do it like in the anxiety example, you know, people who are combating anxiety, they will say, I'm sitting here right now, I'm in a chair, my arms are on the chair, I feel the floor, I feel the table, I'm breathing, you take three deep breaths, um, inhale till it almost hurts, exhale the same amount, inhale, I always inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, okay? And you are grounding yourself to what is real, what is around you right now. And then I like to couple that with gratitude. So I'm grateful for technology that is in front of me. I'm grateful for water in my water bottle. I'm grateful for my home. I'm grateful that I am inside and safe, that I have a place to go during shelter in place that is safe, those kind of things. All right, then this is one that I heard another life coach talk about and I loved it so much. And I think that this would help so many of us to take on a different mindset, not a mindset of, I can do everything now, but a mindset of, what would I want to be and do during this time if I could get out of the, you know, the survival mode? What would I want? And she called it a pandemic manifesto. So I've written mine here, but um, some key words, I'm going to share mine with you. Some key words are grateful, show up, and uh, love, okay? Those are some key words to use in your um, pandemic manifesto. Okay, and I love this so much because I think that anytime we're able, and if you're not able, just stop the video. There's no judgment. But anytime we are able to think about other people, how we can help others, how we can reach out to others, our life gets better, right? That's a spiritual teaching. That is a truism. All right, so... Um, I broke mine up into grateful, showing up, and love, and then who I want to show up for and how I want to show up for them. But you can do two, four, six, eight sentences. I think mine is one, two, three, four, five, six sentences, okay? So it doesn't have to be really, really long. And you can do this, like if you have a morning practice of thought work, like filling, filling this in, you can get this at my website, donnareach.com. Um, freebies, forward slash freebies, all of these documents are there. Uh, you can get that there and print them off and have one for every day. Um, uh, that if you have some kind of morning practice, prayer, discipline, poetry, I used to do poetry with my kids every morning, Bible verses with them every morning, 
Um, you know, I do my own uh, readings in the mornings and things, and you can do it in the morning and at night, just something to bring you back to what you can control. Okay, knowing that there are so many things we can't, but what about the things that we can? So here's mine. I just wrote it real quick when I heard about it. I thought it was cool. I am grateful for my health, my family's health, my home slash shelter, food, clothing, and the many luxuries that I have. During this time, I want to show up for those I love, for those I have influence over, and for people that I do not even know. I will show up for those I love by speaking truth to them, checking on them, and listening to them. I will show up for those I have influence over by giving them value in my teaching and content. I will show up for those I do not know by social distancing, thinking about praying for those who are sick and for those who care for them. I will show up for myself by having self-integrity even when it is hard, by doing what I tell myself I will do. And I will show up in all of these with love because love covers everything. So I would love to hear yours. If you wanna put them in the comments or email me or message me, I would love to hear your um, pandemic manifesto. So that is another practical tip. Another practical tip is don't debate on socials. Don't do it, do not do it. Because when you are trying to get rid of a negative thought and replace it with something, so you're trying to get rid of the thought, this pandemic is horrible, everything is so horrible, and you wanna replace it with, um, during this pandemic, I am safe in my home, or uh, during, during this pandemic, I have my basic needs met. Okay, you want to change it to a thought across the monkey bars a little ways, it's not so despairing, so if you want to change the thought there, so you get a different feeling, and then you have some great actions down here, all right? If you start arguing on the socials, you never escape negative thoughts because notifications. <laughs> Not only that, but usually when we argue with people on social media, in the comments, we are passing some kind of judgment on somebody else, right? When we're arguing, not when we're giving advice or helping people, but when we argue with them or when we put them down or when we disagree with them um, in, a, in a judgmental way, we are usually judging that person. And then we get notifications every time. So those thoughts of that interchange never leave us. So they're always in front of us. So it's really, really hard to change your thought here and get this rid of this despairing feeling and get some better actions that will help you in your life when you're getting notifications of negative thoughts all the time, right? So no arguing on the socials. Counteract negative with positive. Okay, there are plenty of positive people out there to listen to, right? Churches this week on Easter week are putting out verses, they're putting out songs, they're just filling us with positive things. Brene Brown, uh, my coach, Brooke Castillo, um, a coach that I know for um, uh, Latter-day Saints, Jody Moore. There are a lot of people out there coaching and giving good advice and help to people, right? They're out there saying positive things that can help us change. There are podcasts, there are TED Talks right? There are so many ways that we can counteract the negative with positive. And then understand the role that your thoughts have. We have to understand that our thoughts have a direct impact on our feelings. And our feelings will completely revolutionize our actions. And this is why I use this to teach emotional eating and overeating and craving, giving into cravings and things like that. Because this gives us a feeling and our feeling drives, drive, that feeling drives our actions. All right, I just wanna close with um, something that I have at my blog, that's a freebie, 
that I think is really helpful during this time to get in a different frame of mind. Okay, I'm not selling you anything, all right? Okay, so this is free at my blog and it's donnerish.com forward slash freebies. And it is a document that there is a page, each, each one is for adults and then each one is for kids. All right, and you can use this a number of ways. But right now, especially with schools, at least in um, our area, being closed for the whole rest of the school year, all right, and right now at least in Indiana until April 20th, and now I understand in Michigan until May 1st, so we have some more time to be quarantined, more time where we can't take our kids on field trips, we can't take them to museums, we can't take them to the zoo, we can't take them to the baseball games that are, you know, should be opening up soon. Just a lot of things that we cannot do, right? And so a lot of times we as adults can get stuck in a rut, right, of every day is the same. I keep seeing these memes on Facebook with Bill Murray from Groundhog Day. It's another day of quarantine, right? <laughs> because that starts to feel that way after a while, right? And those are funny, by the way. I love funny memes. You can put a lot of funny memes on my wall and I would appreciate it. Okay. And so we need some things to delight in. And research, science shows actually that when we plan a delight ahead of time, it has a bigger effect on us. And it even goes so far, I love this research about vacation planning because my son is like a huge Disney planner for us and we meet and we plan and we talk about it. And once our vacation is started, actually it's still two and a half years out and we still talk about it all the time because some studies show that planning a vacation brings as much joy to a person as going on it. Can you believe it? So you get double the pleasure, double the joy from planning. Well, the same thing is true with our days, right? Getting up in the morning and thinking, what am I going to do today is not nearly as effective as saying, okay, this is my delights for tomorrow. These are my delights that I'm going to have. So that is why uh, my assistants and I made these, this delights of the day package and it's for free. Just go get it at donreach.com forward slash freebies. And it's laid out in a couple of ways. So you have just this thing. Another thing I love about this is I've been seeing a lot about time capsules and things. So what you can do actually is you can fill this out and put it in a binder and fill out another one for the next day and you can save it. That would be very interesting to come back and look to. Or you can take pictures of it each day and put it on your Facebook page and it'll come back in your memories later. Just some cool ideas to remember what kind of things you had for your delights. So this one is just a regular delight list and it has the dates all across there. So you choose circle Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you put your the actual date there and you list 10 delights that you want for tomorrow. Okay. There's an adult version of that and there is a kid's version of that. Then there's another one that is by categories. And you know, I would have to use the one by categories because I'm an organizing freak. All right. So here we have the dates and the, the days and then the dates, and then it's broken down. The thing I like about this, especially for the kid one, is that when they can't think of things, we can prompt them. So what kind of spiritual or emotional delight of the day do you want to have? What kind of physical movement do you want tomorrow? What do you want to read tomorrow? What do you want to listen to tomorrow? What do you want to watch tomorrow? How do you want to connect? So you could do it for tomorrow, like at the dinner table or before bed, or you could do it the next morning at breakfast for that day. But I think doing it the day before is always fun because it gives them something to look forward to. When they wake up in the morning, they're like, oh yeah, I get to listen to this. I'm going to play with this today. I'm going to do this today. We used to do this kind of thing with our kids to, when we made up their like summer school schedules and stuff. It was so much fun because they're so used to doing school all the time that we gave them some delights for the summer. Um, what am I going to clean today? That's delightful for kids, right? What am I going to create today? What am I going to cook and bake? Um, and so there's an adult one of the categorized list and a children's one and then or kids and then there is blank categories that you make the categories for uh, adults and for kids. So I want to thank you for watching this webinar for being patient with me as I try to explain such so many things that I explained like over probably 20 episodes. Uh, 10 that are at the podcast, Think, Feel, Eat, and 10 more that I had done before that in the group. I tried to explain that in such a short time. And I just want to encourage you to remember that neither one of these is right and that your thoughts are fine. 
if you paint the whole house and your thoughts are fine if you don't feel like you can get out of the mode that you're in to do something else. It's perfectly fine. And while we are focusing on meeting family needs, on finances, on feeding everybody, on schooling everybody, it's perfectly fine if you don't do all those grandiose things too. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you sometime at my blog, DonnaReach.com, or in my um, podcast, Think, Feel, Eat. Thanks a lot.